So let's move on to the second step here. This is where PPP is going to perform authentication. In the first authentication mode that we are going to learn will be password authentication protocol. After the link negotiation is successful, authentication negotiation can perform. Remember I mentioned that authentication is an optional, but if you choose to enable authentication, the two authentication option here will be PEP and CHAP. And we highly recommend that you use CHAP rather than PEP. Why there is a case? Let me explain this. PEP authentication requires two-way handshake. So there's only required two-way. Negotiation packets are transmitted over the link in clear text. Now you understand why CHAP is recommended because PEP when it's being sent is in clear text. All right, so we know that internal security is not so secure. But anyhow, let's look into how PEP work. So on the first step, you can see R1 is going to have defined the username and the password. The username is called HCIA and the password is called Huawei123 with the uppercase H. Now this information is recorded in R1, whereas in R2, they also have a configured username and password for authentication on S100. No worry about the configuration. I'll show you a full configuration later on. So after the LCP is negotiated, so this one is already passed, we look into the authentication phrase here. So in the authentication phrase, in the PPP frame, we have the password authentication protocol that consists of the entire username and password. So the peer initiate authentication. So when the peer initiate authentication, let's see here, I want you to take note here. This information is actually sent by R2 to R1 and we call this as peer and we call R1 as authenticator. So peer initiate authentication. The authenticator is going to check if the username and password is correct. Okay, that is step number two. If the step number two is correct, then I'm going to send an authentication ACK. Now, just now we look into the PEP. These are two-way handshake, but now we look into the CHAP. Uh, as uh, I mentioned here, CHAP stands for Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. This is preferred. CHAP authentication requires three-way. Okay, you can see here it's a three-way. Negotiation packets are encrypted before being transmitted on a link. This is important for security because it's of encryption. So again, we have the authenticator and we also have a peer here. R2 is a peer, R1 is an authenticator. So assuming that uh, the LCP is negotiated, so we have authentication take place. This authenticator, the authenticator initiate a challenge carrying a random number. So instead of the peer initiate, but this time using trap authentication, it's the authenticator who initiated first. You can see that it just sent a random number. Okay, it's not a real uh, password or username and the protocol is using a CHAP in the PPP frame. This information is received by R2. Now R2 upon receive this random number, this is what it does. It's going to put in the ID of one. They are going to add a random number with the Huawei. This information is going through the hashing and they have the MD5. Please remember that this information, which is in MD5 result, is not the actual username and the password, but it's just an MD5 result. This information, as you can see from here, code number two, is a response ID1 name HCIA, and the uh, MD5 result is being sent. So I have the name and I have the MD5 result, but I do not have the password is being sent to R1. R1, as an authenticator, is going to check, verify the MD5 value. So because that I already have this information in my database, the hash that I have over here must match the hash that I perform in R1, okay? So if the hash is successful, then the PPP authentication will be successful. So that's why CHAP is a three-way handshake. This is more secure as compared to PAP. Let's look into the third process here, which is 
NCP negotiation. So here we have a static IP negotiation. So in this third process, after PPP authentication negotiation is successful, then it will go into the NCP negotiation uh, phrase. Here we are going to negotiate the format and type of data packet transmit on the data link. IPCP is one of the protocol that they use in this phrase. So IPCP, for example, is classified into static or dynamic. So let's look into the first one here, the static. Now in R1 and R2, they need to configure the IP address. So as you can see from here, we have 10.1.1.1 slash 30 and 10.1.1.2 slash 30. So step number three here, which is NCP negotiation. First, R1 is going to send a configure request packet. So this is a configure request packet stating that I am 10.1.1.30. R2 respond to confirm that I record this, uh, your IP address is 10.1.1. And now I'm requesting that my IP is 10.1.1.2 and then uh, R1 verify this information. So it's pretty simple on the static IP negotiation. Now we look into the dynamic IP negotiation. Now this is very commonly used, especially if you are going to get a dynamic IP. Think about the case where you are going to data for your service provider. It can be uh, an analog modem or it can be uh, ADSL. So you are going to do some authentication. Right now, you may not have IP because when you connect to your service provider, you may want to use a, a dynamic IP. And most likely, you are going to use a PPPoE. So this PPP have the option to use a dynamic IP. So let's have a look here. In dynamic IP negotiation, one app for PPP can assign an IP address to another end. As you can see from here, R1 have no IP. First step, send a configure request packet to notify the peer end that it has no available IP address. I currently have a 0000, 000, 000 IP. Now R2 upon receive it, uh, is going to send a message of configure NAK saying that I'm going to give you 10111. So the determine that the peer IP address is invalid and return an IP address for negotiation. Okay, so the IP address to negotiate is 10.1.1.1. So it then uh, reached to R1. R1 is going to resend the configure request packet that carry the negotiated IP. It said that, hey, all right, thank you very much. I do uh, think that 10.1.1.1 is okay. For me, I'm going to use 10.1.1.1. Can you confirm that? So step number four is R2 confirm saying that, all right, uh, you are okay to use this 10.1.1.1. And once it's being confirmed, because R2 also have that IP address that need uh, R1 to confirm. So here, step number five, R2 also send out a configure request confirming that uh, R2 is using 10.1.1.2. And finally, step number six, R1 confirm that I acknowledge that you are using 10.1.1.2 slash 30. Okay, so this is the uh, NCP negotiation. So once this is complete, the full IP connectivity is established over PPP.